everybody, I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you how to cook holiday mashed potatoes. Now I have about 10 potatoes of varying sizes from small to very large and that's pretty typical from a bag over here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel the ugly parts off, anything you don't like. And I'm trying to retain the skins tonight because these are nice thin skins on these particular potatoes and um, they have nutrition, more nutrition in them than peeling them off, okay? That's where a lot of the nutrients are in a potato is in that skin. And we usually just peel them away and uh, throw them out, so don't do that. Just peel off any spots that don't look nice and leave the rest that does. You're gonna mash it all together anyway. I call these dirty mashed potatoes <laughs> when I leave the skins on. Consider saving your peels in a resealable plastic bag in the freezer for when you're making soups and stews. Uh, potato peelings will thicken up your soup a little bit because of the starch of the potato and uh, plus there's nutrients in them that you don't need to throw out. So on my stove top I have a large pot with water probably mm, just over half full because this is going to displace a lot of water when I put those potatoes in and about a teaspoon of salt in there, okay? So I'm just going to chop these guys up into a nice dice. That's going to cook things faster. If you throw them in there whole, it's going to be a problem. Plus, uh, these guys aren't all the same size, so we're going to try and keep things uniform. About a one inch dice, maybe two inch dice. I don't want to waterlog these guys, so I'm going to wash them until they're just knife tender. That's going to take less than 15 minutes. I find that there's never enough mashed potatoes left over and we like it for breakfast in the morning. You can make potato cakes as well as having leftovers for tomorrow night with turkey. Now when my mom makes mashed potatoes, she typically does not leave the skins on. I'm the one that does that in the household. But um, if you want to peel them off, go ahead and peel them off. That's a very more elegant way to eat them. Um, but if you, it's just, you know, family and you want to give them a healthy, nutritious, tasty dinner, I want to leave those skins on, that's my opinion. Now my water is nearly at a boil, I'm going to start putting these guys in. Now I'm going to bring these back up to a boil as quickly as I can, so I'm putting the lid on. And when that happens, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer and I'm going to let them just simmer in there. You don't want it on a really high, high boil because it starts to break up the pieces of potato and waterlog them. Don't do that. You want to keep them nice and fluffy, but you don't want wet potatoes. You want them to be full of cream and butter. So it's just come up to a boil now. I'm turning it down to a simmer. And I'm gonna let these go for maybe 10 minutes now. I'm gonna check on them, and make sure that they're knife tender. You're gonna use a nice sharp knife. And they have a ways to go. So we'll see you in maybe 10 minutes. My potatoes are nearly knife tender. So I've picked some fresh parsley from my garden and I'm just going to mince that. I love seeing the little flecks of green, especially at the holidays in my potatoes. Not that they're going to not be slathered up with gravy. <laughs> I have some cream, I have some butter, I have salt and pepper ready, and my parsley. Okay, these potatoes are done. Now I'm just going to strain them. Then I like to put them right back into the pot that I boiled them in. It's already nice and hot. It's going to keep those potatoes hot and it's going to help you melt your butter. I'm adding a generous amount of butter. It's the holidays, maybe a couple tablespoons worth at least. Now these potatoes are going to take quite a bit of salt and quite a bit of pepper, so go ahead and, and season generously. We're going to re-season after we taste, make sure everything is on point. In goes my parsley. And we're going to start with cream already. We're going to add at least a quarter of a cup, maybe a third of a cup. Let's see how that goes. And mash them up. You can whip these guys up if you want to, or you can just use your elbow grease. Now it's the holidays and I like to add just a tiny grating of fresh nutmeg here. Just a hint, you don't want too much, it'll overpower. But just a little bit gives that je ne sais quoi that everyone loves. So let's mix this through and we're gonna do a taste test. They're light and fluffy. Mmm, that's good. Boy, a little bit more salt, a tiny bit more butter, a tiny bit more cream. And I'm gonna stir these up. We should be right where I want them to be. One more taste test. 
Mm. Perfect. Let me put them in a nice serving bowl. So just scoop them out, put them in a nice serving bowl, and serve them family style. Now that's a whole lot of mashed potatoes, but half of these will be gone tonight for sure. So there you have it folks, there's your holiday mashed potatoes. You could have peeled them if you wanted to, you can add whatever kind of herbs you like to it. Um, now it's going to be served with turkey gravy, or not, you can have them just like this. Beautiful, light and fluffy, and we have a whole bunch, which is fantastic. Now I'm going to keep these warm on a double boiler until our gravy is ready and our turkey's done. So that's how you do it, that's how you cook holiday mashed potatoes. Easy peasy, all right? You can do it too. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E, the capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly, YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly, and you can find me syndicated on Roku. Come to my website at CookingWithKimberly.com and subscribe, interact with us, and let us know what's going down in your culinary world, all right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.